Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at some of the different ways you can input MIDI data into Cubase. Now you'll certainly know one of these already otherwise you wouldn't have been able to use Cubase but we're just going to look at some different ways you can use uh, real-time recording and extensions thereof such as step time etc and find different ways for achieving the same task but depending on your keyboard skills and depending on the situation uh, different ones can be appropriate in different places so the first one obviously is real-time recording though i say obviously sometimes people don't realize you can do this so you can hit the record button star on your keyboard etc and then you can just record in real time so we'll just do something very briefly with that straightforward so just playing whatever's on the keyboard and as we can see there it's been recorded slightly out of time because uh, I'm the world's worst keyboard player and I have a tendency to play a bit before the beat now we can fix that in fact you can fix it while you're going because obviously what you can do is press Q and if you've set an appropriate quantize not 16th in this case because I'm a bit previous but quarter like that it will move it into place but if you know that what you're going to record is going to need to be quantized, what you can do is actually set it to be quantized straight away. So if you've got to work really quickly, which sometimes we do, you can do that. And all you need to do is open up the transport bar. And then you can see down here, if you click there, we have this uh, section which says auto quantize. If you turn that on, whatever you've got recording uh, will get quantized as you record it. So we're just gonna zoom in so you can see that in action there. So we can see that these, in fact, I'll just, undo the quantizer them so you can see that they're a little bit before the beat etc and now we are going to just record something new here but with auto quantize turned on and it gets quantized straight away and we can see even without opening it up that's what's happened but there you go so if you've got anything you need to record and you want it quantized as you go. Often with things like drum patterns, you can find you can play it close enough that you can set it on eighths or even sixteenths, depending on the tempo, and have it quantized straight away. It's nice and easy to do, but make sure you turn it off uh, when you don't want to be doing that. Okay, so those are two variations really on real time recording. The next one we're going to look at is step input. So step input takes the real time part of the equation out. It allows you to record what you're playing on the keyboard, but it removes the the constant onslaught of real time so i'm just going to pencil in a new part here and this is available in either the full key editor or in here they're the same thing largely so step input is here it used to be a foot now it's some building blocks and when you turn it on we start inputting data as soon as you touch on the keyboard so we're not going to play the keyboard but an important thing is moving your record point to the right place so where this is actually going to insert and often it starts at the beginning so i've pressed the right cursor key and you can see i'm moving forward a quarter note at a time because we're set in quarters for our quantize setting so i'm going to move to the beginning of this part and then i'm going to play what i want to play so in this case i'm just going to play one chord so i'm just going to play a c chord and notice what happens you will hear it but it doesn't get recorded until I release the notes and now we can see if I scroll down there we go now if I do another chord I can do it one note at a time as long as I don't let go so I'm going to do D then an F then an A for a D minor nothing's gone in yet but when I let go they all come in as if they've been played perfectly in time with each other they're a quarter note long and the next one same again any order I like you can see same things happen there so this is really useful if your keyboard skills aren't great or you're building chords that you're not really confident with you have to play the right notes because if you play a mistake it will be in there but um, anything where you can't do it in real time this is a really good way of doing it obviously you can change this to something where the the tempo would be the, the flurry of notes would be way too much so 30 seconds or 64th or just even 16th if you want to come up with some complicated baroque sounding arpeggio or, or line etc you can record it really quickly 
by doing this and the timing will be perfect and you can make it up in real time. So let's just quickly do something like that. Okay, so that kind of thing you can do really easily with step input. Now, the final thing we're going to look at is kind of a variation on that. And what it does is it allows us to record, let's say, the rhythm of something. We can record that in one way and then we can change the pitches of the notes afterwards. So what I'm going to do is use real-time recording to record a rhythm and then I'm going to use this uh, MIDI modification to change the pitches of the notes so you can change it afterwards. And you don't have to just do this for... Uh, recording you can just do it to take an idea and change the notes that are in it really quickly by using the keyboard so first things first let's get this recorded So there you go, there's our rhythm, but at the moment obviously it's all on one note which is a bit tedious. So let's just make this a little bigger so we can see this a little better. Now this is in a similar area here, so I'm going to click on this first note here and then I'm going to activate this MIDI input and this allows us to change different parameters of it by playing things on the keyboard. So at the moment the only thing that's turned on is record pitch. Normally by default you would have velocity on as well, but I'm going to turn that off. So we're just going to stick with the velocities I've recorded and now I'm going to play in the correct pitches but not in real time. So let's say if it was something too complicated, something I couldn't handle on the keyboard, which all of us have but some of us are a little lower level than others, like me. Um, so let's just take a look at that. So deliberately played out of time there. But there you can see I've then added the right pitches. I'm just going to turn this off to avoid any unwanted input. And now when we play it back. Yeah, happy birthday, etc. Something uncontroversial. So that can be used to modify the pitch of something you've done. You could also do it for the velocity. So let's say we wanted to go through this and change the velocities. We could just click on the first note. We'll activate MIDI input. I'm going to turn pitch off and velocity on. And now as I play, so it allows you to alter those really quickly and really physically rather than spending, you know, time moving up and down with a pencil and the mouse etc you can do it on your keyboard and get some really uh, good results so there's four different ways of getting MIDI data into Cubase <laughs>